What's up YouTube? I'm gonna walk you through my recent poster design process where I'm gonna share with you how I create real looking texture in Photoshop. Now, it's not as simple as just dragging on a file, but there's methods that you can take to create authentic and unique texture. So let's dive in. So taking a look at the final design, which is called Airborne Grace. Now I found this inspired by a few skating photography photos I saw on Unsplash, and I've created this cool composition using a few assets and fit it into a poster design in a grunge style. So as I zoom in, you're gonna see a fair bit of detail across the text and the image. You can see a nice clear texture and you can see it's distorting this text and it's adding a nice bit of gritty texture to it all the way around. Now as I zoom out, this is the same across lighter and darker color values. You can see here, there's a small bit of like dotted texture on his back as well as this overlaying gritty gray color texture across the white values. So I'm gonna jump into a new canvas and start breaking this down now. So if we go up to file new, and I'm gonna use my poster preset, which is 3840 by 4800 pixels. So it's high resolution above 4K, and it's really good for Instagram and social media output. Now the first image that I spotted and used, I wanted to create as a full screen, full bleed image, and then work on top of that. So I'm just dragging that image in here. Now this is already scaled perfectly. And I thought that this was cool because it has a bit of natural texture to it, some nice motion. And I think that I could add a cool color effect to it and it would still be very clear what it is and it can fit the theme really well. Now my next step here is gonna be adding some grid lines just to define the structure and define the placement of where every asset is gonna go into the design. Now throughout this video, I'm gonna be showing a few assets that I've released recently as part of my poster pack volume one bundle. And it is a set of four design packs that can take all of your posters from start to finish. Now you're gonna see these throughout the video, but if you want 50% off everything in my store as an early Black Friday sale, use the code DGHFRIDAY50 for 50% off everything until the end of November. So for the grid lines here, I'm gonna be using my grid controller, which is my first design pack. And it has 18 grid presets in here that you can simply press play on from your actions panel. And it's gonna input these grid sets up straight into your design. Now I'm gonna be using golden grid E, which is a grid calculated by the golden ratio, which is 1.618. Now this creates an irregular grid pattern that you can't make with standard Photoshop presets. So for this, I'm now gonna add in a margin as well. So I'm gonna go and add a 100 pixel margin and press play. And this is my grid setup ready to put some assets in. So bringing in the second image here, I thought this had a really cool kind of vertical composition with a nice bit of motion blur going up. And I wanted to bring this into this kind of vertical ribbon area here. So if I just bring this down in size and then shift it a little bit, I'm then gonna use my golden grid to shape my image cuts. So now if you wanted to mess around with the placement inside the mask, just press unclip and start moving it around there. But I'm happy with where this is. And now dragging in the third image, I thought this was cool because the skateboard is almost completely horizontal and his hand is up, so I thought it could make it seem like he is hovering on the actual mask or if he's doing a trick on the edge of the image mask. So I'm gonna drag his hand along the top edge of the canvas, and then I want his skateboard to be along the bottom line. So I'm just gonna play around with the size here until I get this just right. So if I get his hand just in bounds, I'll say, there we go, that's just about right. So now, marquee tool again, highlight this kind of square area, and there we go. Now obviously I need to paint in the rest of the skateboard to make it look clear, so just grab a normal hard brush and just paint over those wheels there. There we go, now as I zoom out, the image is now in, and we can start moving on to color. So yeah, my next step is then adding a color overlay, which is gonna be via a gradient map. Now I've got a few presets for these in my pack as well. So I'm gonna group all my images, just name this images here, and then come down to adjustments and add a gradient map down here. Now with all of the natural texture and motion in this image, I thought using a gradient map would be perfect because you can still decipher what's going on without it needing to be natural colors. So I'm gonna open up the gradient editor here, come down to my gradient mapper pack and then start cycling through a few of these. Now I wanted to create an inverted effect. So I'm gonna press reverse and you see immediately, like because of the natural grit, the black and white colorway works really well. And I wanted to add a little bit of color in. So I cycled through some and then settled on this option here, which is nine. Now with the color decided, we can start inputting typography and any other effects that we wanna move on to before we get the texture going. So I've opened my grid lines back up here to decipher where I'm gonna place this text. I'm gonna use this area here because obviously we've got the dark contrast, which we can use light text with, and it will be really clear to see. So I'm gonna type in the title, which is Airborne Grace, and I'm gonna use Airborne in one typeface and Grace in a bit more of like a luxury serif or script. So I'm gonna set this to around like 90 points, just so it's slightly in from this image here. I would place here, but because I'm gonna be using two lines of text, I'm gonna line up Grace with that, which is the second word. So I'm gonna drag this slightly upwards and then create a duplicate, drag this one, onto the line and then type in grace. The sans serif typeface I'm using is owner's extra wide and then I'm gonna be using sloop as my script font. I'm gonna make sure that this is not all capitalized and then I'm gonna move this along here and increase that in size. I'm gonna have this overlaying both the image and the text. So I'm gonna maybe try and settle this corner in here with the margin bounds and then I'm gonna set the word grace to slightly more of a gray 
just to add a little bit of contrast and then drag this under the gradient map and you're going to see that it's going to go dark. Now this is as I'm going to add a stroke outline to even further push this contrast. So I want the stroke outline to cut out of the airborne words. So I'm going to add a duplicate of this layer using command J, add a stroke onto this outline, set this to around four pixels, press OK. And then all I'm trying to extract from this is the outline of the stroke. So I'm going to convert this into a smart object, command click on this. Now, if I come over to airborne, I'm going to use the mask and then invert it. And you're going to see now that it's going to extract the stroke outline from the airborne text so that I can continue to keep this text outside of the gradient map layer. And then I can add a simple stroke on there. Now, that may sound quite confusing hearing it all at once, but essentially I'm just trying to extract the outline of the stroke out of the primary text so that they're both still visible. So I'm going to set this to around four point stroke and I can just use black as the color here so that it matches under the gradient map. And there we go. Now we've got a nice bit of contrast between the two title texts. So then just moving on to the smaller type assets, I'm going to open my grid back up and you can kind of decipher from here where the placements will work. You're going to see this nice bit of harsh contrast space down here where you can place in some light text. So I'm going to paste this in from the initial design and I've simply just used a smaller weight and size for the type, set them both across two lines and then aligned them with the grids here. So there we go. Already placing them, they look better. And now I also wanted something to kind of fill in this space here whilst maintaining the same kind of style. So sometimes if I'm working in a bit more of a modern style, I'm gonna use these small kind of shape assets to start shaping the grid. So I'm just gonna drag in two small rectangles, drag them over to this grid line, and it kind of refines the structure a bit more. It's just a nice simple effect to kind of help within this space. Now I can drag the word. So then I also wanted to place in a bit more body text as well as my logo. So I'm seeing this kind of light area up here. So I'm just gonna paste in the text I've used here from the other file, drag this underneath my gradient map so that we've got that contrast. And then you're gonna see this text box is within this golden ratio bounds here. So drag that right up to the line and then shrink that in. Now I'm gonna add a stroke just to really fit in with this grunge effect. Cause if you add these kind of thicker outlines, it creates an almost ink bleed look. Now my last step is gonna be adding in this logo. So I'm just gonna paste this in, drag this into the top right corner here of the grid lines. And then once again, drag this underneath the gradient map and then add a color overlay just so we can fit it in with the darker colors rather than just going with solid black. So you can just drag this around and you're going to see how it reacts with the gradient map. I'm going to settle it to around this like dark blue tone here. So now I've got all the assets in, we can move on to actually creating this manual texture and really finalizing the poster. Okay, to start with this, we're going to clean up our layers and group them together so that we can utilize our time and optimize how we texture this. So because we have some text layers underneath the gradient map and some above, we're going to group them accordingly. So for example, we've got the kind of darker text like Grace, this text here, and my logo. So what we're going to do is group those three together, which are underneath the gradient map, and just call this dark text. And then the remaining text above it, group that, call it light text. It's Command G or Control G to group how I'm doing there when you highlight layers, just as a quick shortcut. So now if I hide and reveal this, you're going to see we've got our light text down there in one folder and our dark text in another. Now the first step I'm going to take with this is using a displacement map. So with our light text layer just here, I'm going to use Command J, I'm going to hide this, and I'm going to convert our new layer to a smart object. Now this is to act as a working copy so that we can still have the original files and not be destructive. So now we can name this light text effects, and now we need to create a displacement layer so that we can add in this kind of distorting effect to our text. To do this, I'm going to use one of my grunge textures, so I'm going to drag in one of my texture files into a new Photoshop file. Now this is a transparent layer, so you're not really going to see this. But as I zoom in, you're going to see this kind of scratch detail and fine dust. Now what you want to do is you want to save the texture as a Photoshop file, as a PSD. And then you can select that file to create the texture from. So I'm going to go on File, Save As. And I'm just going to come to my desktop here and just name it Displace. Make sure that the format is Photoshop and press Save. Now with our Smart Object Light Text Effects layer, we're going to have this selected. Come up to Filter, Distort and displace. Now I'm going to set the scale of each to 20, which is like, kind of like a medium scale. Then I'm going to select the P layer and press open. Now you're going to see immediately what it's going to do is slightly displace the text area and create these really rough edges that work really well with this gritty and grunge style. And you're going to see how closely it starts to match the background texture with this kind of natural grain. Now when you use displace, you're going to see here, it obviously quite literally displaces it and moves it a few pixels off of the original format. So I'm going to use my arrow keys and shift them back into place. Since I've used 20 horizontal and vertical scale, it's going to be 20 shifts away. So just kind of count it in as a reference and just there is good for me. You can open your grid lines up and just naturally align them back to where they were as well. Now you don't have to do this in a group. You can do each text layer individually. I like to keep it as a group because I kind of want a uniform look. I'm going to repeat the same step with dark text here. So duplicate, hide, convert to a smart object, and then we can rename this bit to effects, filter, displace here. I'm going to set the scale to a little bit less for this one, set it to 10 each and select the same file. 
Once again, it creates that really nice outlined grunge look. Use your arrow keys to drag it back in place and then zoom out. And as you, as you see these details here, it creates that gritty, stressed outline across all your assets in there. So my first step in texturing is always roughening the edges to kind of integrate it within the images and the background that you have in your design. Now, the second step is to paint in your own texture, which creates that unique look. Now I'm gonna do this using layer masks. So on my light text effect layer, I'm gonna have this selected and create a layer mask. Now there's two ways of doing this. You can either paint in the dark or you can hide it completely and start painting in the white. So I'm gonna completely make this black by using command backspace with black as my background color. So this is gonna completely hide the text. Now I'm gonna use my grunge brushes, which are part of my volume one poster pack, as I've mentioned. Now this is 12 grunge brushes in varying different sizes and weights in a few different effects. So we've got a cement look, We've got a bit of acid, we've got fine dust, thick dust. And you're gonna see as I click on these, every click is randomized. So you can see that the outline of the actual brush changes shape on every click. Now this keeps it as an authentic look. You know, you can't really mimic this. So I'm gonna paint that in and I'm gonna keep clicking and tapping as it draws in that kind of natural grunge look all over the text. And as I zoom out, you can see how much grunge we've got in there now. And a good tip for this is to cycle between your black and white brushes. So if I press X, I can get rid of some, press X again, and I can bring it back in. It helps to keep it inconsistent to add to the authenticity of the look. Now I'm gonna use a few different brushes here. So you're gonna see this is really thin. You can barely see this one. It's a bit more of a fine look. We've got dense dust here, which is a bit more of a patchwork one. I've got another thick kind of acid paint looking brush. So there's a lot of varying sizes and styles in there. So you can play around with it and get the exact look that you want. But I'd recommend to cycle through all of them just so it looks really unique. But yeah, I'm gonna use this acid one here just to finish it off. It's got some cool shapes in there and some cool detail. I'm gonna paint a lot of this back in to keep it as a bit more of a fine look here. And as I zoom out, it looks much better, a lot more integrated within it, and it kind of matches the texture of the background. So now just repeat this step on your dark text effects layer. Now this one I'll show you from full opacity rather than starting with it removed. So I can just make sure that my black brush is selected and then I can just click over this and slowly start removing chunks of the text. Now you're gonna see that background color come in and I think adding that kind of noise Doing this is what helps to integrate it really well. So that kind of texture just here on the E looks really nice. And then we're gonna drag up to this text up here, paint this in. If it's too harsh, you can just bring your white brush in or just press undo. And remember each click is gonna be unique and it will change and randomize and scatter the effect. So I'm gonna to go to a bit more of a fine brush here, click over my logo and look at that. Brings in all the color as well. Works really well with the gradient maps. So now as I zoom out, all of the assets are individually textured now. You can even do this on the images. So if I get my two overlaying images and group them, put a mask on there, and you can even paint out some of the areas within this. And it adds that kind of splatted texture. There you go. There's so much you can do with this and it's all manual, so it's much harder to imitate. There you go, add a bit of grit onto his feet there. So nice. Now that we've actually painted in some authentic texture, this is when you can add an overlay just to top it off and give it a bit more of a uniform look. So for that, I'm gonna use my 4K textures here. Now these are my grunge selections. If you get this pack, you get the option of both the flat files and transparent versions. So if I drag a transparent version on, this is my acid texture and you can see that the brushes and the textures are intertwined. So they're made from each other. So it really helps to create that consistent look in your texture. And this works really well on transparent. You can just drag it over every shade and it blends really well straight away. So this isn't what I use in my original, but I'm really liking this for the grunge look. And now, now we've put in a bit more of a heavy one, we can go for like Fine Dust B, which is a bit more of a transparent version. And it's just gonna add that really subtle kind of light topping off. So if I hide and reveal this, you can see how subtle it is and it adds that kind of like white specks and really heightens those dark values. Then as the last one, I have Fine Grit Transparent, which is a bit more of a dark version. So if I hide and reveal this, it adds in that dark grit. Looks very similar to the visual style of cement. So now I'm gonna turn this opacity to about 50 and zoom out. And this is my final poster design. It's as simple as that with these transparent textures because they're already matched to the colors that you put them in. They work really well off the bat and you don't really have to use any blending modes. So there we go. Now guys, as always, I wanna thank you for making it to the end of the video. I hope that you can find these processes useful and that you can take a tip or two that I use in my workflow and add it to your own. Now, as I've mentioned already, the volume one bundle is all live on my website and you can get 50% off if you use the code DGHFRIDAY50. Now the volume one bundle is already discounted. So the 50% works on top of that. So enjoy it while it lasts until the end of November. And I hope that the assets you can find useful. So I'll see you soon.